Hey you guys, welcome back to Confessions of a Middle Age Housewife, episode number seven. And I'm gonna be talking to you guys about um, why I've had to learn how to manage how I respond in situations in front of my husband um, to de-escalate the situation. Okay, so I have two different scenarios that I'm gonna tell you about. If y'all know my husband, which a lot of you who follow me may know him, but some of you don't, my husband is a lovable guy. He's sweet, he's helpful, he caters to me, he loves me. I have no disbelief in that whatsoever. Um, and he's a good father, a good provider, a good man. I don't have too many negative things to say about him except for he has a switch. And when you make him flip that switch, he's a whole nother type of person. Some people have learned that the hard way um, and I have seen him in action. And I have noticed that if I am emotional about something where it brings me to tears because I'm angry about it and I'm mad, then that will cause him to react abruptly. And I don't want that to happen. The main story was, um, it had been a few years. We had moved to Houston, y'all know we live in Texas. And we had been living here for a while. And um, I hadn't been home in a few years. I had not been to my home state, my hometown in a few years, and I was just really desperate to go home. So my parents bought us tickets for us to come home and visit, and I was so excited to go home. The unfortunate part about the trip was that it was only like a weekend trip. So we were really gonna be there from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and you guys don't know this, but normally when I go home, I like to go home for at least two weeks or more because that's where all my family is, is, that's where I'm from, I have friends there, and so there's just a lot of people that I need to see in that time that I'm there, um, and a weekend trip is just not enough time. But it didn't matter, at this point I hadn't been home in a while and I was willing to take whatever time I had. So our flight was supposed to leave early Friday morning. The airport that we were going to was on the other side of town. At the time, our son was like, under one I think he might have been like eight or nine months or something like that so he was like a baby and so we're flying southwest we get to the airport we drive an hour from our house to the airport um, in Hobby and when we get there um, we get up to the counter and they say where's your son's birth certificate and I'm like birth certificate what do you mean and they was like well you have to prove that your child is under one years of age. So I'm like, what? I did not know this. I didn't bring his birth certificate, birth certificate because obviously we don't normally need to travel with his birth certificate present to prove that he's, you know, a small child. Nobody told me this, I didn't know. And they was like, well, ma'am, it's on our website. You know, they're just being like real rude and disrespectful. So I'm like, well, what can we do about this? Like, can we speak to a manager, you know? And they're like, the manager comes out and the manager's like, well, you need to be able to prove that this child is, you know, um, under one years old or else you're going to have to buy a, a ticket, an adult ticket for the child. And I'm like, but you can look at our baby and tell that, you know, this is a baby. This is not a one year old child. Like you can look at him and tell like he's still a, a small baby. I don't understand. Like we're not trying to get a free seat and he's gonna sit on my lap anyway so it's not even like if we put him on the plane he'd be able to sit in the seat by himself so i don't understand what's going on so they're like well the rules are the rules you so i said well what can we do they said well we can schedule you for another flight later now the next flight that was leaving out that had seats available for all of us wasn't leaving until like two o'clock which means that we weren't going to get to Kansas City until like almost four or something like that you know like almost four or five o'clock and me just being so upset about wanting to go home not being able to see my family and this was basically going to make us lose a whole entire day because they were not going to let us board our flights without this birth certificate I just started crying I just started crying I mean I was just mad like what the I'm trying to go home like what what is the problem like you see this is a I was so mad and so when that happened my husband was like y'all need to fix this and he just starts going off like he just starts going off he's like 
I don't give a damn what the F is going on, blah, blah, blah. He was like, y'all need to fix this. There's no reason why we shouldn't be able to board our flights. Da, da, da. So he steps in and he intervenes at that moment. So he's so loud and irate that everyone is now listening. And the manager, who's also a guy, he says, well, sorry, if you keep talking, I could just put you on a no flight list and you'll never fly again. I said, babe, let's go. But I grabbed him. I said, let's go. Let's, let's just go home. Yes, please set our tickets for the next available flight out. You know, I called my mom and told her what happened. I was just so devastated. I was like, really? I'm still mad at Southwest about that. And people be trying to talk stuff about spirit. But a lot of these airlines beyond spirit is just as janky, shady, and trifling. But we're not we're not getting on that for today. But I'm just saying, I was I was so upset and just heartbroken because I'm like I haven't y'all don't even know that I haven't seen my family in a few years and you literally robbing me of a day now. So when I get there, I'm gonna have that night Saturday day and then Sunday morning we fly back out and come back home. You made me lose a whole day. Oh, anyways. So that's the first example of um, when that happened, when I've seen my husband react to, you know, my tears and he just gets upset and like, he's ready, he ready to tussle at that point. He ready, he ready to knock some heads off the shoulder. And I'm like, oof, I gotta be careful how I handle stress and pressure in front of him because I don't want him to react, you know, in an attempt to protect me and then things escalate to, we could have been on the freaking no fly zone just because he went off on the manager like he was cussing him out he basically low key he low key threatened him and manager shot back with like hey keep it up and i'll put you on a no fly zone and we're like oh no my babe, babe come on shh, come on shh, shh, shh. don't say that come on let's go Let, let's get out of here um here's example number two and i'm not gonna lie i'm so glad that he was there when it happened because I really needed him to be my voice for me because I literally could not physically, I just didn't have the strength to say anything. So my son was being born. I was going into labor basically. And we get to the hospital and at first they were like, you know, we want you to wait. Like don't try to push or anything until, you know, your doctor comes because she's on her way, but she's in traffic because he was born like early in the morning we went to the hospital like at 6 30 and i think he was born like within an hour and a half later so he was actually born before my actual doctor was able to make it into um the delivery room but anyway so while we're in there and we're getting prepped they asked me did i want an epidural and i said yes now i do know now that epidurals are linked to like you know a lot of side effects and stuff like that but i had had one with my daughter and i felt nothing it was a very easy breezy you know delivery and i had my daughter vaginally and i didn't have any problems so anyways um i said yes i wanted an epidural for the second one because i was thinking that i was gonna be able to have time for this epidural to kick in so they're like, okay, we're gonna go ahead and order the epidural and have them come in to administer it. So I'm like, fine. So three people, you know, three doctors, I guess, walk in. So apparently the doctor is supervising the doctor in training, and then they have another person watching for observation. So they were like, you know, Miss Yo, I need you to sit very still, kind of hunch your back over and you know stay like that and do not move because obviously this needle is like about this big we're going to stick it down your spine and if you move it could paralyze you okay well that's freaking scary nobody wants to be paralyzed from receiving an injection or whatever so i'm like okay so i'm standing as still as i can hurting and you know labor pains and everything just going on so they're allowing the girl um, who is the doctor in training, I guess, to administer the epidural. So she sticks it in one time, and I guess she doesn't get it in right, like it's not straight or something. So she pulls it out, and he was like, nope, you got to do it again. So he sticks it in, she sticks it in again. And he was like, it's still not right. So by this time, i like freaking out because I'm about to start crying because I'm like, why do you keep sticking this thing in and out of my back? And two... 
I'm in a lot of pain and I'm scared to death because you got this lady sticking this needle in here and she don't know what she's doing. So I look over to my husband and I squeeze his hand and I'm like, please, like help me, like say something. And he was like, um, he, he immediately like, like that teardrop rolls down my eye and I'm like, like handle this, please. I can't do it. And so he's like, uh, excuse me what's going on he was like why why is she you know if she doesn't know what she's doing why do you have her administering this epidural and the doctor was like well sir this is a self um teaching institution here and he was like and that's fine i understand that y'all gotta get y'all's practice in and that you know everybody's learning but not on my wife and not today i'm gonna need you to give her this epidural and you take this to another room and practice over there somewhere. But he was like, y'all done already stuck her twice with this needle and you still ain't got it right. Like how many times do you think you're going to keep pulling it in and out of her back until she gets it? I was like, "Woo! Thank you, babe. So the doctor was like, okay. So he went ahead and gave it to me. Y'all, I had the baby before the epidural even kicked in. So basically I had the baby natural and by the time the epidural kicked in which was like almost 30 minutes later it felt like I was freezing cold I was <laughs> I mean because I was just shivering like I could not oops excuse me I was so freaking cold they had to put like three four blankets on me turn the heat up like I, I don't know what it is that's in it that that makes you cold but yeah I was freezing cold. And needless to say, my baby came. He was healthy. He was beautiful. Um, beside that one little hiccup, I didn't really have any problems. But yeah, those are just two examples of one showing when I was like, okay, let me calm down. Because if I don't calm down, that's going to make my husband even more irate. And then two, when, you know, I was like, babe, I need you. Like, I, I need you. I can't, I can't advocate for myself in this moment like I need to I need you to step in and all I did was just squeeze his hand and just give him a look like what the hell are they trying to do so like are they trying to kill me what what are they doing and he stepped right in and handled it so that's my two stories for today I haven't done one in a while I hope you guys enjoy these stories that I put out here because they are true and they did happen let me know what you guys think I'll catch y'all in the next video bye